is I'm going to have my beautiful grandma say a little prayer over me. Father God, we just bless our grandson, our precious, precious grandson that you brought into my life. Thank you, Lord. He has grown to be a very handsome man. He loves you, Lord, with all his heart and his soul. And he's just the best. We are so blessed to have our Zachary Williams in our home. Thank you, Lord, for Zachary. We love him very much. In precious Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Has there ever been a time in your life that you were so unashamed of something that you did not care who knew about it? You would even go around telling people that you didn't even know about this very thing that you were unashamed of. One of the American Olympians, her name is Simone Biles. She suffers from what is known as ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Her medical records were one day were hacked and they were leaked out by the Russians. And when it was found out, Simone publicly stated that she is unashamed to have ADHD. And she is unashamed that she has to take medicine for this very thing. As we look into Romans 1, 14 through 17, we see something that Paul himself is unashamed to let people know. In Romans 1, starting in verse 14, Paul says this, I am under obligation both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish, so I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation both to the Jews and also to the Greek. For in it is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. See, in this passage, we see three things that Paul is convicted by because of the gospel. One, he is convicted that he is obligated to preach the gospel. We see this in verse 14. Two, he is eager to declare the gospel in verse 16. And three, he is unashamed of the gospel in verse 16. We see also three explanations that Paul has for the gospel. One, the righteousness of God is revealed. Two, it's a righteousness of that is by faith. And three, the righteous will live by faith. These are Paul's explanations of the gospel. Paul is saying that he is unashamed of the gospel. There is no apology for by him to others. No apology for what he believes or no apology for how he preaches about this gospel. See, the gospel brings salvation. We live in a world today where people are perishing. If they do not know Christ, we should tell them about the good news that can save them. There could be no difficulty to the apostle to preach to the believers in Rome, but it was difficult to preach to the whole Gentile world, especially to the wise men who were so much inclined to despise the gospel as foolishness. Paul would not confine himself to the congregation of just the Christians in Rome, but even to those who opposed him. The young Paul certainly would have rejected the view that Jesus had been raised after, uh, after his death, not because he doubted as such the resurrection, but because he would not believe that God chose to favor 
Jesus by raising him before the time of the judgment of the world. Paul's persecutions probably involved traveling from synagogue to synagogue and urging the punishment of the Jews who accepted Jesus as the Messiah. Paul was on his way to Damascus when he had a vision that changed his life forever. This was according to Galatians 1, 16. God revealed his son to Paul. More specifically, Paul states that he saw the Lord in 1 Corinthians 9, 1. Paul himself was present at Stephen's Stoning, Paul persecuted Christians. Paul was arrested for the gospel in Acts 21, 27 to 36 in AD 57 to 59. He was transferred as a prisoner to Caesarea. He stayed there for two years. And on a voyage to Rome, he was shipwrecked. He spent three months on the island of Malta. Finally, he arrived in Rome. He was under house arrest in Rome. He traveled to Spain and he was arrested again. In Rome, he was beheaded for this gospel. He died as a martyr for his faith. His death was part of the executions that was ordered uh, of Christians by the Roman Emperor Nero. And this was following after a great fire in the city in A.D. 64. Before he was martyred, all these things happened to Paul. And he boldly proclaimed that he was unashamed of this gospel, the very thing that he was beheaded for. Paul talks about all the things that he went through for the gospel, as we see in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28, as Paul states this, Are they servants of Christ? Am I speaking like I am out of my mind? But I am so much more in harder labor, in more imprisonments, in worse beatings, in frequent danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in open sea. In my frequent journeys, I have been in danger from rivers and from bandits, in danger from my countrymen and from the Gentiles, in danger in the city and in the country in danger on the sea among false brothers, in labor and toil and often without sleep, in hunger and thirst and often without food. He was in the cold and exposure. And apart from these external trials, he says, he says I face daily the pressures of my concern for the churches. See, God has limitless ways of reaching people for the gospel. So if you feel like you don't have the ability to reach others for Christ, think about this 76-year-old woman named Ethel Hartfield. See, Ethel she had this desire to serve the Lord. And she went and she asked her pastor, if she could teach a Sunday school class at church. He informed her that he thought that she was simply just too old to teach a Sunday school class. She went home and she was heavy hearted and she was very disappointed. Then one day, as Ethel was tending at her rose garden, a Chinese student from the nearby university stopped to comment on the beauty of her flowers. She invited him 
in for a cup of tea, and as they talked together, she had ultra, she had the opportunity to tell him about Jesus and his love for him. He returned the next day with another student, and that was the beginning of Ethel's ministry. Ethel was delighted to share the gospel of Christ with these students because she knew he has the power to change lives. His gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, Romans 1, 16. Precisely because of Ethel's age, Chinese students listen to her with respect and appreciation. When she died, a group of 70 Chinese believers sat together at her funeral. They had been won to Christ by a woman who was thought to be too old to teach a Sunday school class. The very thing that, that this pastor kept Ethel from teaching a Sunday school class was the very thing that these students respected her and had the desire to listen to her. It was the very thing that God used to lead 70 students to Christ in a relationship with him. Amen. What are some things that you are not embarrassed to let people know about you? Is it you're not embarrassed to have a, a dog jump up in front of you while you're preaching a sermon to love him a little bit? Are you not embarrassed of that? Is it that you maybe you have ADHD like Simone Biles? Maybe it's that you suffer with your ability to remember certain things like I do. Is it because we all have something that we are not afraid of to let others know about? Why not add to it? And make the most important thing that any of us is unashamed of and let that be the gospel of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We all can walk around with boldness and saying, I'm unashamed of this or unashamed of that. I'm unashamed to have tattoos on my skin. And sometimes we talk about we're more unashamed of one thing, but the thing but then the gospel lacks behind it. When really the thing that we should be unashamed of the most is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which has the power to save. What is it going to take for you to go through to where you can boldly say that you are unashamed of the gospel. We discussed all these things that happened in Paul's life. He was shipwrecked. He was on house arrest. He was in prison. What are you willing to go through for the Lord? See, all these things happened to Paul. He had imprisonments. He was suffered with beatings. He was in frequent danger of death. Five times he received the 40 lashings minus one. Three times he was beaten with rods. He was stoned. And after he was stoned, he thought people thought that he was dead. He got back up and went to the very city that stoned him and declared the very gospel that they stoned him for. He was shipwrecked three times. He spent a night and a day in open sea. He was in danger from the rivers and the bandits, in danger in the city and the country, in danger on the sea and among false brothers. He labored and he toiled. He often went without sleep. He was in hunger and he thirst, often went without food. He was in cold and exposure. And apart from all these external trials, he faced daily the pressures of his concern for the churches. So what can we apply for ourselves through this message of what Paul is telling us about? One is to just go out and preach the gospel wherever you go, no matter what may happen to you. What we should believe in light of this gospel is that the gospel has the power to save. 
Overall, the application of this passage is to go out and to preach the gospel and to believe that it has the power to save, believe that it has the power to transform lives. Right now, we're going through this election, and there's a lot of turmoil that is taking place on both sides, on both parties are fighting, saying that they won. The other one is saying, no, I won. And the truth has yet to be really revealed. And it is causing a lot of turmoil within people in our country. People are sitting and waiting for the outcome. And there will be one group of people that will be hurt if Biden is elected. One people that will feel bad and hurt if Trump is reelected. And there is this turmoil that is taking place. But there is one thing that can bring peace. There is one thing that can bring comfort. There is one thing that can bring hope. There is one thing that can bring salvation. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've gone through many different presidents throughout the course of our history as a nation. Some of them we've liked. Some of them we haven't. But out of the course of our, out of our nation, the course of our nation, the history of our nation, there has been one person, one God, who has sat on the throne since the beginning of time. And his name is Jesus Christ. And his gospel has the power to save. His gospel has the power to transform lives. And it's the very gospel that Paul is calling us and telling us that we need to be unashamed of this gospel. If you are a Christian today, if you are a believer in Christ, do you feel obligated to preach the gospel? Are you eager to preach the gospel? Are you unashamed of this gospel? This gospel that has the power to save. No, there was one point where I wasn't following the Lord and I wasn't walking with him, right? I even denied the fact that maybe there even may be a God. And when I was 19, I thought about suicide, but it was this very gospel that saved my life when I was 19 in the middle of a ball field. I remembered what my parents had taught me growing up. I remembered what I learned in Sunday school classes. I remember what I learned sitting in churches and this very thing that I have ran away from and, and, and denied was the very thing that saved me when I was 19 years old in the middle of the ball field in Highland, California, where I was considering suicide. And it's the very thing that I am unashamed of now and because of that because of the gospel as a believer in christ we are called to preach this gospel we are called to go out into the world and preach the gospel and to baptize them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit teaching them everything that god has commanded us to do do you feel obligated to preach the gospel today are you eager to declare this gospel are you unashamed of this very gospel that you should be obligated to preach? Do you believe that through this gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed? Do you believe that it's a righteousness that we're called to live out by faith? Because the righteous will live by faith. So whether you struggle with ADHD like Simone Biles, whether you struggle with retaining information like I do, be unashamed of the gospel. Declare the gospel. Because one day, Jesus is coming back, riding on a white horse to take his people home. And he's going to ask us, what did we do with his son? One, did we believe in him? Two, did we share him with others? God bless. All right.